Hello guys and girls, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do this ring, how to 3D model it, and hopefully how to do some renders. I'm gonna use KeyShot, but I ended up I ended up doing the final renders in uh, um, Sketchfab, just because it gives me more of this, uh, you know, realism, and I really like it better. It uses PVR workflow. So basically what we are going to do is we're going to start with this cylinder. We're going to delete the, the, the faces that we are not going to use. And we're going to use the, the cap of the cylinder to basically sculpt the, what is going to be like the, the profile of this sort of trim that is going around the, the wedding band. So we extrude the edges here. What we're gonna do, what we're doing is uh, we just press shift at the time we, we do the, the modification and um, that's gonna extrude either vertex or faces, edges, it doesn't matter. You just press uh, shift and drag that's gonna strew this kind of the shortcut now that we have the profile what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the the circle that is gonna add as the circumference of the of the ring so we scale it up rotate it and then we have to line up this profile to with the with the circle that we just created. We're gonna press C for the curve curve constraint, and then um, we are going to modify the the profile around the the curve. It is very important that you line up. The profile with the beginning of that circle and the beginning is uh, always indicated with a uh, letter U okay here I'm going to, uh, to from view and I'm gonna use X to constrain to the grid and move it that way I'm gonna make sure that it's exactly located with the with the circle begins then I'm gonna select the faces of the of the profile and the curve and extrude it all you gotta do is uh, add enough resolution enough subdivisions so it can uh, it can you know work its way around the circle then we gotta delete the the hidden faces between the two ends we delete them and we are gonna merge the edges of both ends i use that tool adjust the tolerance Perfect. So once we have like this, probably we want we want to add some edge loops, uh, some um, edge loops around the around those edges, just to make sure that once we subdivide it, sub subdivide the mesh and smooth it out, it doesn't affect the geometry right there. And we're gonna do the same with the, the base of this dome. The chart could for that is uh, Control B. I'm 
then we're gonna smooth it out. The smooth. Now what I want to do is I want to add a text that is gonna have um, this low low profile with these texts. Uh, could be for the character goal, or it could be even the brand. Okay, I believe I'm gonna uh, I'm I'm gonna change the the font and I believe I'm I'm not gonna use the 14 car because uh, uh, I I just don't like the how the number looks so maybe I'm just gonna delete it. If I wanted to do this, I probably would use a different uh, typography for this, and for that, I will have to do a separate, separated uh, text. So I'm I'm gonna rotate the text. Let's call it up. And then what I want to do is I want to add a deformer. This deformer, basically what it's going to do is going to uh, transfer that curvature of the ring to the text itself, right? So we're going to use that. Then we're going to we're going to the edit points and we just move it down that's going to do like this nice curvature to kind of adapt the text to the interior of the ring then what we do is uh, we position it we're gonna do a boolean operation between uh, a subtraction operation between the ring and the text. First, we gotta select the ring and then the text. Go to mesh, boolean, difference, wait a little bit, and here we go. There you have it. It's a um, it's a nice, very nice thing that you can do. Uh, I really like it a lot and it works very good with 3D printing. I have to try it. And then I'm going to import it into, uh, bring it into Keyshot. And I really like Keyshot for doing very quick renders and it's just a matter of uh, drag and drop materials, environments, uh, you can play with the lights. I always use an HDRI image for the lighting just because it gives you a more realistic look. Here you can see I go to the, the editor of the HDRI and I'm gonna do some modifications here. I'm gonna add some ambient occlusion and it really is up to you. You can play with this all day long until you get the result that you're looking for. Um, sometimes I use this, sometimes I use um, sketch fab instead i also know how to do render man and uh, sub some painter but those are like for another day uh, today we're gonna we're gonna do you know keep it 
simple. All right, this is my final render in a Sketchfab. If you like it, please uh, like and subscribe. Leave me a comment and tell me what you want to see next. Uh, I will see you in the next video.